to appear to you and get a photograph of, of him. This is no flash, nothing. And so he's out in the field and it starts coming to him. He just starts laughing and laughing when Kazekiel comes because it's just bliss energy. And he looks up and he sees this and he takes a picture of it. And here's this huge golden white ball of light, which is he's just a pure energy being. It's actually a, a male and female combined, which is Kasia and Ezekiel of the past. And behind the light, you can see the Dome of the Rock and like this whole portal opened up to another place. Just incredible. And, and Michal led with, you know, was, he saw the picture. I showed it to him and, and he goes, that looks like the Dome of the Rock. He said, I, you know, it was a mind blower. So, I mean, these events are happening and they're being photographed now. The feeling that comes with them is undeniable. And like never before, I mean, we had events happen here before, but nothing like what's happening now. And, uh, you know, and then you have this other sect out there just saying, you know, these guys are total Looney Tunes, you know. You know, I was, uh, I, I did a lot of traveling this month and I, I, I took one semi load out to Kentucky and I turned right around and got on a plane, flew back, back to Idaho. And as I was flying back to Idaho, all the planes were full, of course. The two people that were sitting next to me, uh, I won't mention what church they belonged to, but they, they were both religious people and we got into a conversation about energy and, you know, various things like that. And, and at the end of the flight, the plane landed and they said, well, we, we can tell that you're a very religious man and uh, we, we appreciate you talking to us. And I said, well, actually, uh, nothing could be further from the truth. Uh, I'm not a religious man. Uh, but I would like to consider myself a spiritual man, and there's a big difference between the two. I'm not locked into the dogma and uh, and the philosophies of men, but uh, the difference between someone who's spiritual and someone who's religious is the latter is afraid of going to hell, and the former has already been there. <laughs> yeah. The, the, I, idea, the idea behind this is that the earth, the whole solar system, in fact, is going through a section of the galaxy that it has not been through in a long, long time. And the solar wind is so quiet right now, way down around 300 kilometers per second, that it can no longer buffet against the cosmic wind that's coming in from this section of the galaxy, which means that just about now, the leading edge of that wind has made all the way through the heliosphere, which is a very, very low breeze right now, a solar breeze, I'll call it, not a wind, that now those particles and those frequencies are reaching the Earth, and they are affecting the planet, and they are affecting the beings and the DNA on this planet. And it's switching on things that have been dormant in the human being for a long, long time. And those awarenesses are lighting up. And when I mention to these two very religious people something about this new energy coming into the universe, coming into our solar system, coming into our bodies, and switching things on, they immediately knew what I was talking about. And it didn't come from their religious teachings. It came from the feeling that they already have but couldn't explain inside their bodies. Yeah, that's that's great. I... You know, they, you know, I said one time, I start off the program, where I go, you know, everybody's feeling it. There's something on their horizon. You know, what is it? You know, and I was going, is it this? Is it this? Is it this? And basically, it was all the above. And, uh, and you know, everybody said that. They said, when you started that show, uh, you know, we all felt it. We're all feeling something is happening. Something really big is on the horizon. And, and, you know, but they don't really know what it is, but they have this deep inner feeling that, that it, it means a great transition in the future. Well, that's why we have great teachers like you out there, because it, you are out there saying, uh, you know, this is a little bit like, uh, like the movie Cocoon. You remember when they were swimming in the pool and these old men got out of the pool and they just felt so invigorated and they, mm-hmm. They felt energized because of the new energy that was in that water. Well, that's sort of what's going on right now. There's a sparkling effervescence that's that's beginning to react like oxygen and an alcohol flame inside of people. And, and fortunately, there are great teachers like you out there saying, 
this is what the flame is. <laughs> and maybe scientists like me that are saying, and this is why it is happening. <laughs> yeah. you know, realize that you are a piece of God. You know, I, I consider people like you my left brain. You know, it's uh, after I had <laughs> after I had the drowning experience. You know, my right brain blew wide open, and and I was very practical and more scientific and everything. Then the right brain blew wide open, and I would get all this information, and then I'd go back to to you guys for the physics behind it, so I could understand it. And and that's why I love your work and the work that you're doing and, and others. And and now it, it's it's you know because when I get this information, I'm just going no, that can't that can't be right. You know, there's there's no way I can't talk about this. And then when I find out all the latest breakthroughs in quantum physics uh, explains this perfectly, you know, then then it, you know it gives me that ammo I need to go out there and go public and deal with it. On that level, yeah. well, you're exactly right, and and, and the quantum physics uh, it's kind of a catch-all uh, for people who don't study physics on a regular basis, and for those of you that are casually reading theoretical physics, and I, I highly recommend that you continue to do so. Brian Green and Fred Allen Wolf and Dr. Michio Kaku, and of course, read the books that we've written. Uh, what will happen is the things that you thought were absolutely fringe, that couldn't possibly be true, things like time travel and multiple dimensions and beings that exist on multiple planes of consciousness, and consciousness itself affecting uh, uh, the, the manipulation and the very appearance of matter in our own dimension. These are very openly and very rapidly and deeply being discussed in the physics community right now. You know, exactly. I noticed that Amit Goswani was talking about about how that they they kept arguing with him that there is no signal between consciousness and matter, so it can't affect matter. And, you know, the, the other, I think, was it Niels Bohr, or what was the one, uh, Action at a Distance, or where things are are in constant communication instantaneously. There doesn't need to be a signal. And and uh, you really look at this whole thing of where all the latest information, where they are coming to the, the crossroads, where they are realizing. Now, even Bruce Lipton's work is showing that the cells, that whole our whole bodies are being animated by an outside intelligence. Seventy uh, percent of our bodies are you know because we don't have the genes available to run these bodies so it it really is all boiling down to as consciousness is cause and this physical world is just the hard copy or the effect well that's true I, you know in physics we 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 call this the observation effect and it even goes so far as to say that uh things cannot be real unless uh, there is a consciousness there to observe it. Now, that's really, really profound for physics to say, but um, because what it implies is that there had to be a primary consciousness in the universe, which mm-hmm. which religion would call God, but uh, which uh, those of us, you know, in 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 more esoteric uh, worlds would call source, mm-hmm. and that that this primary consciousness sort of observed matter into being. And if you if you want to think of it from quantum physics, let's say well let's say you were a photon traveling at the speed of light uh, through the universe. Well, we understand from the mathematics of it that at the speed of light mass becomes infinity, time becomes zero, which means distance becomes zero, and all it takes is one more assumption to realize that the entire universe, the whole thing is a singularity which means that at the speed of thought or the speed of light, everything in the universe is perceivable. Mm -hmm. There is no past, there is no future, everything is perceivable at once. Now, slow things back down to where we are, much slower than the speed of light, and things stretch way out like a big ruler, hundreds of billions of light years long. And we see it as very very distant and very imperceptible. Mm 